about to do this. I'm feeling a lot warmer this week. And Thanks we are it. live. And we're live, but not live. Live, but not live. And Joe is straddling the <laughs> radiator. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you just to so brutally use the word straddling you are so early on. Straddling. Straddling. So you are um, toasty today. Toasty today. I've got a radiator right here because we're still in this uh, little... Maybe we should build like a little fire. That'd be amazing. That'd be cool. That'd be right like vibe. Fire, fire pit podcast. Fire pit podcast. Oh, maybe that's Coming a new venture. Soon, yeah. Coming soon. <laughs> right. So... What are people? Let's jump into some questions. I yeah, suppose. questions. Well, obviously, uh, a video came out this week that was uh, potentially quite a big shock for people. Um, all about shadow. Yeah. Um, which was really sad and hard, hard for you to film. I know. Um, so a lot of the questions have kind of been revolved around shadow and mm. and you know how how you feel about that. You know, you invested a lot into shadow mm. with those training videos that you can go back and watch of of Will working with shadow. Um, you've invested a lot emotionally and kind of physically in a way in, into that relationship and, and to come in and have that kind of, we, we just went in, didn't we? And we're told this is the situation. There's, mm -hmm. there's nothing we can do. How do you kind of feel after that? And um, Obviously, you'd be pretty heartless to not be yeah. devastated yeah, yeah, by yeah. it. I think the thing with the job that I do, with the dogs that we focus on, mm -hmm. It's part of the. Yeah, of it's course. part of every day, and there is always an element of becoming desensitized to not just the behaviours, but aggression, like uh, aggression, dog fighting, dog yeah, bites. Yeah. Some things to me that are quite mundane to some people are the worst experience they've ever come across with a dog. Unfortunately, wrapped in that argument is dogs getting put down. It's mm -hmm. something that mm -hmm. um, oftentimes. I'm involved in situations and it's happening now at the place where we uh, volunteer with the police cases where they ask me to go and look at it and sometimes I have to make a case for the dog to not get put down. Sometimes I have to understand that this dog is going to get put down and they just want an extra opinion on it. It's, it's um, very much is part of being a behaviourist and being mm. a behaviourist specialising in aggression cases. Um, especially those revolving around children. It kind of comes with the territory. It sucks when it was with Shadow. Um, if I'm being, like with dogs like that, and I was very open that he was a very complex case, there's always that part of the back of my mind because it's not my shelter, it's not my rescue, and ultimately yeah. it's not my decision, mm -hmm. that it would only take one serious incident with another member of staff there, and the decision would be taken out of my hands, but if we were making significant progress mm -hmm. with probably mm -hmm. the most complex case I'd had, which fires me up. Yeah. It, get that gets me going yeah. um, to then have that kind of the decision taken out of my hands but for health rather than for a behaviour was just quite new mm. to me that doesn't happen very often I think that's what surprised me actually is when we went into the rescue centre to like we, we knew his back legs were bad and mm. I think when they said oh Shadow's going to have to be put down mm. I'd my immediate assumption was yeah. he's gone a bit in yeah. one of the staff and it's it's too mm. much now and it's been but actually it was his health and I think mm. I was like oh man that's just kind of come out yeah. kind of come out of nowhere for me mm. it's interesting because some of those really serious behaviours that we saw from Shadow might have then also stemmed from the amount of pain that yeah, he was in it's very true. and that was yeah. a piece of the puzzle that if I'm being honest I probably overlooked a little mm. bit that mm. I presumed it was all coming from uh dominance aggression but there might have just been a case of just don't touch me i'm in a lot of pain um mm -hmm. now yeah bless him it sucks man. that's i think that's like the weird thing about dog ownership is that like if i like if i hurt myself mm -hmm. i'd be able to go will i've mm -hmm. done this to my leg like i've broken my leg and mm -hmm. i need help this, yeah. this is the issue here's the issue mm -hmm. whereas with dogs it's like some is visible and you can mm. see what's going on but others it's it's kind of like is this affecting you enough to affect your behavior yeah, or yeah. Is, or what's actually deep rooted here what's going on and uh, i think that's the struggle i have of i see it mm. but i'm like oh, i don't know how to help you yeah. through this it's not a training thing it's mm. not a it's a actually you're just in pain and i don't really know how to how I can help you. And oftentimes, especially with the breeds that we work with, the big powerful guardian breeds, sometimes they are breeds that in their histories have been bred for fighting. Yeah. So they're very pain tolerant. Mm -hmm. So it's almost impossible to know. My bull mastiff was the same, was riddled with really bad cancer. And it was only at the point in which it was like so bad she couldn't push through it anymore 
that we knew something was wrong. Oh, so the vet said that she would have been in a lot of pain for yeah. months, but was just kind of cracking on, as it were. So when we, like I say, it's one of those, me being my, a lot of my, especially around came, like my behavior modification work is so based on the root cause, mm -hmm. but you have to have, be able to strip it all back to find mm -hmm. that root cause. With a case like Shadow, we will never know. We'll never know no. what was it coming from, trauma, abuse, um, anxiety, fear, or more on the opposite end of independence, confidence, dominance, um, or pain, or mm. a combination. Mm. We will never know now, but it was, a, it was a fascinating case. I'd have loved to have had another three or four sessions with yeah. him to see where we would have got. But um, yeah, man, like I say, it comes with the territory. Mm. And as much as, it's a two-edged sword for me, I think, Joe, because I think where I have a lot of success is because of how much I care yeah. and how much you've seen, not just in kind of what we show on YouTube, but day to day, mm. I wear my heart on my sleeve mm -hmm. and I kind of give over a lot I give a lot of myself to anything that I do there is success that comes from that yeah. but then also it sets me up for being hit harder than yeah. some people that are a little bit more close makes you vulnerable yeah and, makes you vulnerable and this is a case where it is like that and yeah I don't claim to be a big tough guy it's sad it sucks it's a shame mm -hmm. it's not nice um, like I say I'm aware every day that, yeah. that this is part of what we do yeah and this is kind of the driving force behind what we're doing is to try and help this issue mm. I'm like so with going back to Roxy your ball master yeah so she had cancer mm -hmm. like at what point did you were you aware as like could you, I'm more interested in just the fact that you said like you know she like her breed mm -hmm. is quite a strong breed and she's yeah kind of bred in a way to deal with pain mm -hmm. yeah so like was there an obvious thing that made you go something's not right here yeah so it was when she was just starting to be um, really bad sick and oh, okay and so, so right. okay. It's a, I can tell the story I've, I don't know we've talked about the when I had my tumour removed didn't we uh, I think a while ago I'll share the story definitely like, I don't know whether we've done it, it here was but yeah, calm, yeah, yeah, it was a really yeah, mad yeah. one for me so that's where so I'd found so we just got married got back from Vegas not we we had just got married. <laughs> Spoiler! <laughs> Where's Rachel? <laughs> Rachel? And Will. Me and got Rachel married. got married yeah. in Vegas. Yeah. Um, and then we came back, and, sh and she'd been in kennels mm -hmm. when we came back. And then she wasn't quite right, but up until we went, no problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We got her back out of the kennels, and she was just a bit, a little bit lower energy okay. than normal, but nothing really serious as far as she was just moping a bit because right. she'd been in kennels. Right. And then, like I say, one day, um, she was being sick. She had quite bad kind of runs the other end. Yeah. And then it was one of those, mm, a little bit concerned. So I made the phone call to the vet and they're like, bring, him, bring her in. And the vet checked her over and stuff. And it was an emergency vet because it was at the weekend. Okay. Um, and then that's where she came back and was like, she is riddled with cancer. Mm. Like, this mm. is a very, very poorly dog mm. and there is nothing we can do for her really? at this stage. So obviously I got all upset and I was yeah. like, I take blame, like should, why didn't I notice something before? Would there have been something we could have done if I'd have known beforehand? And she said no, and that's why it was her that said, like that's dead common. And then she was like, so she's like, we can make her comfortable until tomorrow and you can go to your family vet and have her put down there or we can do it here. So we, um, so it was, it was an emotional week for yeah, me. So man. we, um, took her home and we let her stay, sleep in the bed with us because she was really poorly we went to mcdonald's and i bought her a cheeseburger Amazing. that we uh, like chopped up and mushed up and she tried to eat a bit of it but couldn't oh, bless and her. then yeah we just had to take her in the next day and yeah. by then she couldn't walk so it was like from fine got back from vegas well she seems a little bit off and then like gone just so done. within days within a day. it was oh. a day for yeah and she'd just gone um, and then yeah she just she got put down and then I went home I'm in floods of tears floods yeah. of tears and I'm and what's this and that's when I found my literally that that's when I found the oh lump my in my word. neck and that's the, now I've got to go to the doctors and they yeah you've got tumour mate so I had to go through all my scans and biopsies all in that couple of weeks listen heck pretty mad wasn't it that's hardcore yeah but <laughs> I'm like yes. how on earth you deal with that emotionally um, and mm. physically like Wow. Okay. I did yeah. not know. I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah. But yeah. there you go. There's an there interesting go. story. Yeah, interesting we can go. Story. There's yeah, lots yeah, yeah. more layers to that yeah. story about what happened afterwards. But yeah, I now have no um, thyroid, but I'm all good. <laughs> I think. Is that how you check? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just bang your head. Mm. 
think oh, we're gosh. all good, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it's a, like, it's a bit of a morbid conversation to have, really, isn't mm. it? About dogs being put down. Have you ever had a dog put down? Yeah. So, yeah, recently. Well, mm. fairly recently. Uh, about... Before you started working here, this was, wasn't it? Yeah, just... Okay. Kind of just before, mm. actually. Um, so my flat coat retriever, Bess, she got put down, which was literally in, like the first couple of weeks of lockdown okay. um, oh, in the UK. Vet, that so, thing. well, it was just super confusing. Mm. So she's our like family dog. Mm-hmm. And so she was with my mum. So number one, absolutely sucks because we're put in lockdown and like, it was kind of me looking after her a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. So all I wanted to really do was go down there and yeah. be with her and, mm-hmm. and sort this out myself kind you of thing. Here. But I was up here, mm-hmm. so I couldn't be around. Um, so, but like the vets that we went to were actually fantastic um, and they were allowed, they allowed mum to be with her, um, which was really good. I think like I had in my head, like there was going to be this weird thing where Bess went through a door and then she was mm, gone, yeah. which for some people might actually be really helpful. Well, yeah, for, carry on. For, for my mindset, I wouldn't want her to be on her own now. That's yeah. me personally. So for mum to be able to kind of be with her. So it was kind of done outside because it was mm. summer and stuff. So it was, yeah. So it was kind of, they injected her outside and mm. mum was able to kind of be with her for that. Mm. Um, and then she got taken away. So yeah, very like, I wasn't there and I, I would have wanted to be there, but it's, yeah, just really hard. Like there's so many memories attached. Yeah. There? There's so many things in life like especially like a family dog like that that it triggers other memories and other things that you go through and no loss is easy mm. at all like there's been quite a lot of loss in my, like my family from the past year and stuff and it's just not easy to deal with at all and um, but there's something about dogs that there's this relationship that you build with mm. them and the memories they hold um, and you go oh oh that was the day Bess was doing this yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean oh that was when she was like and that first walk you go where they would normally be there and they're not exactly mm-hmm. which is completely strange especially mm-hmm. like being in the west country like where we lived like mm-hmm. we're walking every day so mm-hmm. for her then those days when she wasn't around I was like this is yeah this is mm-hmm. very strange um, were you there for Roxy yeah so with yeah. Roxy um, yeah I went in that was a sort of right mess. Yeah, I've yeah, yeah. never been more upset in my life. Mm-hmm. Never. Mm-hmm. I've been to a few dogs to get put down, like family dogs and yeah, stuff, and, yeah. and kind of with work stuff. But I have never mm-hmm. been more distraught in my life than when I was there. But yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's a super morbid topic. But I do think if say people are watching this or listening to this yeah. because. Like this is a reality of owning a dog. Yeah, it is. If you get a dog and you yourself plan on living for more than ten years, you're probably going to go through this. And mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that go through it, and I nearly was one of them. But I can't do that again. I can't go through that yeah. again. Mm-hmm. And it took me a while to be ready to have another dog. And even then, I, I got a Labrador because I wasn't ready to get a mat. And it's but, only yeah, now that yeah, I'm thinking about yeah. this is years on yeah. getting a Mastiff again. Um, Obviously, we we had Mabel, and that, that so it had been years until um, mm. what happened there. Oh yes, obviously with Mabel, I wasn't able to be there because that's probably a whole other story with uh, my mum. So Meg, I think we talked about her on the podcast, haven't we? The first uh, we talked about, yeah, yeah, we talked about her. So yeah, she, yeah. Got down, so she, she got put down. Do we tell? So she she got put, put down, down recently. She was yeah, in her twenties, we think. Yeah, though. So yeah. she and she was really old and poorly, and yeah. been a long time coming. Um, and that was we were in the we just come out of lockdown today, so that was towards the start of the second lockdown. Yeah, but that was one right. of them. They sh- they took me off her, they took her off me at the door, oh, and then it was they? like you can watch through the window if you want. I was like, oh, okay, can I not come in? And I've got a mat, and mm, no, you have to really? stand and watch through the window. Yeah, through the window. That's yeah, kind of brutal. weird. Brutal. Yeah, with Mabel, she'd gone in for an operation, yeah, yeah. and then in the operation, they were like there's nothing we can yeah. do we do, we're not going to bring her around is that okay and it's I'm an hour away yeah. um, and I couldn't be there with her but yeah. like I say it's a and then obviously I had to make that video that night and people saw me a wreck on Which that as well I was like 
that I was in another country when that mm. video came out, mm. and I, ah, oh, it broke my heart. Mm. Honestly, like, not partly because I'd been on the journey a little bit. Yeah, like, a lot of me, felt yeah, that me way. and Amy, mm. and like me and Amy had been round. Like, mm. I think only if, like a few weeks, mm. a couple weeks before, and we'd. Yeah, spent time and I'd kind of watched her growing up and I always said every time she would come in, I'd be like, oh, look at those pores, she is mm. going to be huge. Yeah. So it's just like this massive shock. As, mm. uh, and she touched a lot of people's lives. Even, and and uh, I think actually even this week, mm. I've had a DM on Instagram about Mabel. Yeah. Of like, like people kind of being unsure about like contacting you, yeah. uh, which is the sweetest thing, by the way. Yeah. If you're listening to this, you're a great person. Mm -hmm. That uh, messaging about like not sure whether they should message you mm -hmm. because they've got a corso and they mm -hmm. didn't want to bring up any emotional, yeah. which is super sweet, super yeah. kind. But it's like she's still having that impact. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the Riley arriving this week. I'm watching. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm watching the back that stuff, and I'm yeah. like going through the perfect puppy course and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's clips of. Mabel in there yeah. and I, I'm able to go mm. there she is she's still, so she's like I think it's a weird one because she had a, mm. sh a short life mm. but her longevity as a pup mm. will go on for a very long yeah. time because of how many people she's affected in yeah. our lives in yeah. person but mm. also through the means of the course and through YouTube and stuff mm. I think it's really cool. Wow, yeah. that got super emotional and yeah, deep. I'm trying to uh, keep it in. I promise myself. Oh, I prom after that video, I was like, I am never going to cry on the internet. Oh, again. really? I promise myself. I, yeah. can, I take that as a challenge. <laughs> I will make you cry. I'll bring a violin next time. Um, yeah. But yeah, yes. it's, it's just the reality of mm. owning a dog that, you know, these things come. And I think, here's an interesting one. Like, it's on the same topic, but you've got kids. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say you should get, or, or like one of the pros of getting a pet, mm -hmm. weirdly, is a death of a pet. Yeah, teaching about loss. For teaching your children about loss. How do you think, <clears throat> like, um, your kids have like responded to Mabel? Like they were a bit younger, but also recently Meg and stuff. So our youngest is too young and had yeah. no idea. Our oldest was, so when was made? Well, yeah, so he's, he's been in that this year. Three. So yeah, he's yeah. Four. four. He was four yeah. when um, she did. She's oh, just okay. about to turn five yeah. now. So yeah, he was four. Um, and it was his first time experiencing loss. Mm. And it definitely taught him that process. Mm. And it was the first time he had to understand what the word dead means mm. and what death means. Yeah. And that you don't, come back and that she's not coming back and she's not going to be here anymore it was heartbreaking mm -hmm. and we would we would catch him for weeks after um, it's kind of like through imaginative play it's quite common how um, children will process quite complex things is through play okay. um, and we would catch him and we'd be able to listen to him playing and he'd, he'd almost be acting out um, someone going and not coming back and his little mind trying to Bless him. yeah um, and we, we, we took a very we took a very Christian spin on it and that she's in heaven and that she's um, going to be waiting for us and she's playing with Roxy and mm -hmm. um, yeah it was, uh, that that was the worst part of it was trying to navigate those waters and yeah. be real and I'm not going to lie to him yeah. um, he needs to understand what, what that is um, uh, it's a reality of life mm. it would have been nice for him to be a bit older I think um, but yeah and then the same thing happened with Meg but the process was much shorter this time yeah. he kind of got the concept like he got upset and yeah um, yeah uh, and our little one who's starting to talk now there was lots of where Meg where Meg oh really um, okay. yeah and, but again I think he just Hot Wheels came on and he just kind of got yeah, distracted yeah, yeah, whereas yeah, yeah. yeah our oldest yeah. does process it but yeah I do think um, again morbid conversation but Very it is um, do you want to, is it a silver lining is that the nicest way of putting I, it but there was definitely yeah because he also lost his great granddad this year and me and my wife had spoken that it was actually almost a weird blessing in disguise mm. that when that happened he was somewhat prepared for that he was very close to I his great granddad yeah, yeah, and yeah. it allowed him to kind of comprehend it and process it a yeah, little bit better yeah. and he's come out with some really sweet comments about how um, it calls him his, his Gigi his Gigi George um, isn't Gigi George so lucky that he's got Mabel and Roxy to play mm. with in heaven mm. and it, you can see him processing it and it is um, 
I suppose it's life, isn't it? It's learning, yeah. and that's another yeah. thing that dogs bring to us that oftentimes, yeah, we do, we take for granted. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Always yeah, teaching us. To, uh, we the subject, teach them, teach them about to and fail. they teach us. Um, <clears throat> so, change of subject. Yes, we finish on a bit what more of a What have you been putting on fires this week? Lots of stuff on fires. Lots of stuff on fires. We So we build fires here. Yes. We're turning into proper We're country folk. Proper country folk mm-hmm. that we build fires here. Yes. Hence why I was like, fires are podcasts. Mm-hmm. Fire, podcasts around the fire. Yes. Could be a really cool mm-hmm. thing. Fireside podcasts. Fireside podcasts. Fire crackling podcasts. Yeah. Oh. One massive lesson I have learned today <laughs> is that I cannot be trusted with both fire and diesel. No. <laughs> <laughs> One of the scariest moments of my life. Honestly, mm. of turning, <laughs> hearing it go, <laughs> you hear the like ignition, mm. and I turn, you're running away, <laughs> and then I just see steam <laughs> or smoke coming off you. You look at me like, oh my word, that was close. And I'm like, Will, you need to turn around right now because I think you're on fire. So me like running at Will, like, Ooh. but so what, uh, what have you learned? <laughs> That um, my so what I've learned, <laughs> Joe's going to disagree. Yeah, is that if I'm going to use diesel, <laughs> we put diesel on the fire first, then we retreat a safe distance and shoot a flaming arrow into the fire, Which? rather than lighting the diesel with a uh, a flamethrower like I did, thinking that was a good. And idea. by the way, f- not flamethrower. <laughs> Flamethrower, <laughs> like a tiny flamethrower. Yeah. yeah, I would disagree that uh, just don't use diesel. Yeah. You don't need it. Just go simple, just light it, mm-hmm. walk away. Uh, don't try and blow yourself up. So yeah. Is uh, the best way. How every day was short day at the time and I no longer have any legs <laughs> left off my legs. So true. Every day is short day, except when I scold all my hair <laughs> off my legs. Yeah. Which was very true. I thought that that was kind of, you were more, I was like, oh my word, you've survived. Mm-hmm. You've lived another day. You could have died today from fire. You were like, oh, I've singed all the hair off my legs. Oh, I've got a bit of my beard lost. That was the main bit. My bit. I can't believe I've singed a bit of my beard off. Oh, it's so annoying. I'm Mate, like, the effort that has gone into this. I understand. For it to just go up in smoke <laughs> was unacceptable. But I feel like maybe life is more important than beards. Fair play. Fair play. Maybe. Yeah. It was a there's an lesson. argument to be had. Mm-hmm. There's an argument to be had. I am very much playing farmer here on our new farm. <laughs> I'm learning on the job, trying yeah. not to kill myself in the process. I've I've enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. And uh, you got a chainsaw this week? Yes, I did get a chainsaw yeah. this week. And I was freaking out the whole time you yeah. were using it because mm-hmm. you would go down <laughs> with the chainsaw and then you would come up <laughs> with the chainsaw. And I went, no, no, just keep going down. Don't pull it towards your face. <laughs> But, but uh, then I'm getting like two cuts of the hedge in one go rather than one start, one start. I know, but T- time is money. Imagine the, time is money, but imagine <laughs> if you chainsawed your beard off. That would be devastating. Exactly. It would be sick though if I get an added a chainsaw scar down my face. What a story that would be. I'd have to say <laughs> if it you, was like, if you live to tell yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah. It couldn't have been like yeah, I chainsawed myself in the face. <laughs> that wouldn't be quite so cool as someone a story. came at me yeah. with a chainsaw. Like they want I wouldn't want to lie either, so I'd just be like, look, chainsaws, mate, I'm not ready to talk about it. I'm not it. ready and to leave talk the about the mystery it. out there, but people just know that there was an incident with a chainsaw. Just like, burn this side, like, <laughs> cut down this face. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm, Unbelievable. Far life, mate. Far I life. am amazed that we, me and you haven't been to the hospital. Yes, we're doing quite well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm more safer than you. 100%. Uh, 100%. Yeah. But I'm still in the situation. <laughs> You're in the vicinity so, of me, therefore. For example, that chainsaw, that actually is a good point. I stood near you, <laughs> you and you were just hacking away at this hedge. And then this piece of like <laughs> wood just pelts at me and hits my glasses. That so I was like, if I was not wearing glasses, I would be at the hospital Enjoy because that was glasses, in my eye. Mate. Well, safety thank, first. <laughs> yes, safety and vision first. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what we go for. So um, if there's no podcast next week, it's because we're in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Either burns or missing a limb. It's probably one of those. Other two than things. that, with we'll see you in the next podcast. Yes. I I feel like that's a good place to leave it. No, no, we mess it all. Oh, oh, we mess it up. Every day is short day. <laughs> <laughs>
Monday, Monday, Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> it's your day. 